Almighty God, look with love and mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, and to be given over the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human substance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living and stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself in death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forebears put their trust. 
trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and less than human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, You trusted in God for deliverance. Let God rescue you if God delights in you. Yet you, O oh God, are the one who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is none to help. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins i tell you i will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom when they had sung the hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, 
you all will become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up and let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, 
as far as the courtyard of the high priest and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him saying, prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, you also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed. And he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests taking the pieces of silver said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, 
Are you the king of the Judeans? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with the innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Judeans. They spat upon him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the king of the Judeans. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, 
you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake, And what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite of the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said when he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, His disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Having read these Bible readings, think of this. Jesus Christ is a root out of dry ground. By his wounds we are healed. These paradoxes of Isaiah are echoed in the account in John about his death. He is arrested, yet when he speaks, the soldiers fall down. He is tried, yet he is king and son of God and man. He is thirsty and dying, yet he is the source of the Spirit and of water and blood to heal us. Finally, he is buried, but it is in a garden. 
All of this means to tell us that God shares our sorrow and need and death and yet transforms it to life and salvation and hope. More than just a root out of dry ground, his cross is the great tree of life in which we all may shelter. You may shelter there today. And all those things in all the world that we pray for today, God holds together in him. Here are questions to help you and your household to meditate. What images, words, or phrases do you associate with Good Friday? What are your own experiences of death and resurrection? How might you explain the significance of the cross to someone? Dear members of God's family, let us pray uniting our hearts with God's will in the midst of this time that we cannot be together physically. May our spirits come together and lift up these prayers 
of our community and our church and for each other. We pray for the church throughout the world, that our focus would remain on you, on worshiping you, despite any feelings of fear and anxiety we may continue to focus on you and the glory that you display throughout the whole world. We pray for our bishop, our pastor, and all servants of the church, that you may fill them and guide them with imaginative, creative energy to serve this church during a time that we cannot gather as a people. We pray for those preparing for baptism, that you continue to work in their heart to nurture and grow their faith in you. We thank you for the commitment that they are making and join them in their commitment to a life serving and worshiping you. We pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. We pray that they would continue to feel and hear your word and your truth. We pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. We pray that they would be able to feel the comfort and hope of Christ in their lives. We pray for those who do not believe in God. We pray that God would be present in their lives. that they would experience God's peace in this time. We pray for God's creation, prayers of gratitude for budding trees, blooming flowers, as spring spreads across the Northern Hemisphere. We pray that each of us would be able to appreciate and fall in love with nature all over again as we see and marvel in God's creation, all of the colors, that appear in the spring, all of the animals that chirp and scatter in the spring. We pray for those who serve in public office. Give them wisdom, give them love, give them patience, guide them in tough decisions, to have discernment, to listen to others, to hear their heart, to learn from them, to work collaboratively with them. We pray for those in any need. We lift up people that we have not been able to contact, who we can't see, who we can't reach out to. We pray, God, trusting you to provide for their needs during this time. We pray for all afflicted by the coronavirus. Pray for your healing touch to restore their health. We pray for your compassionate touch that would allow them to sense the love and care of family and friends, even though they can't participate physically, that they would feel the love and prayers of all the people surrounding them praying for their healing, praying for their spirit. We pray for those who are in grief and mourning because of the coronavirus. Pray that you would be a comfort, that you would be felt close, that you would give and provide physical signs of love in their life to ease the pain of grief and sadness. Let us say together the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father, our Father in heaven, heaven, in heaven. Hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. 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 Your, will your will be done, be done. on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Is in heaven. Give, Give us today us our daily, daily bread. Our daily bread. Give us our Give sins. Us our sins. Forgive those we forgive those who, those who sin against who us. Sin against us. And Save lead us from the time of trial, and, and deliver us from evil. 
For thine the kingdom, is the power, and the glory, and are, the yours, glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. 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 We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by, by your holy, holy cross, cross redeemed you the world. have redeemed the world.